Hello. Good afternoon. Okay, let's get started. Uh, so I plan to like, spend 30 minutes to go through some assignment specifications. And then we will have around one and a half hour to answer the questions. But let's just have a like quick chat at the beginning. So I will know what kind of question would you like to know in the for the assignment. Just give me a sec. So today's plan is to go through the section 3.2. We will try to learn how to view, view the message between the sender and receiver. And then we will also have a look for the session 3.4. Is that OK? And before we get started, I just want to know like, what is the progression of the assignment right now. I'll just give me a sec. Uh, I initialize a poll so you can let me know what is progress of your assignment. So, okay, looks good. Everyone is working on it. And give me a sec, YouTube. Um, I have already uploaded the recording to the YouTube. Uh, did you have had a check? One. Let me open that one. Okay. So we have a playlist here and it is the recording from last week and two weeks ago we had we have go through some like assignment specification in the recording and we also have some programming stuff uh, in the recording so we have already done some like programming stuff from last week and if you want to know this kind of content, including the specification and the Python basics, then you can go and have a check of this recording. And we have we also have the demo code 101 
uh, basically just teach you how to use the demo code or how to add function based on the demo code. Is that okay? Just like this, we can see in the recording, we have complete a simple version of the sender and receiver. It will be able to send a series of packets and then we can receive the acknowledgement from the code. So that's the recording stuff. Okay. In case everyone has some progress on the assignment right now, so maybe we can have a look of the uh this one segment format. So this one is the uh let's say data structure of the assignment. And this part is very important. So let's just firstly have a look. Let me open the Okay, so let's let's see. We have a sender and have a receiver. Left hand side, sender. Receiver. And the sender can communicate with the receiver. So what is the format of the message is the key point because we are using the UDP link instead of TCP. So we need to construct our own header for the communication to make sure we can have the like reliable transmission between them. So this one is UDP. Then we need to construct a message like header plus payload like this and from the receiver to the sender we also need to construct a message like head, header payload like for example the sequence number I think this one is talking about the mass message format for the header. And it is talking about from the sender side to the receiver side. So from the receiver side, you can have your own header or you can just re reply the sequence number. I think it's okay. So have you guys done this part? Like construct your own header of it. Otherwise, I will just answer the question. Or I will I can show you like how to do it. Okay, you have not. Uh, if you want to send me a message, uh, just send it in the public so everyone can see it. Uh, okay, let me open my iPhone. And last week we go through some like Python basics, including how to read the file and uh, print it and the socket, how to send this message from the sender to receiver. And we also go through the class. So you can know how to play with the class in Python. And we also have some regular expression, but in the, in the assignment, this one is optional. 
So this one can help you to match the string in the message. But usually we don't we don't usually need it as we are using the uh, like our own message format. And next one is the login. And this one is very important. I just want to have a quick look of it right now. So you, you will know like this one, let me share the screen, sorry. I forgot to share my screen. Now you can see my code. So for the login, we have a file like this. Uh, the setting is pretty simple, but the function is pretty useful. For example, this one, uh, I use um, a debug to, and a warning function to print the message in here. So I can simply change the level to debug. So it will show every message in the program, as you can see. And if I don't want, if I like do the submission for my assignment, I just simply change the level to like warning. So I don't need to change a lot and delete a lot of prints in my assignment, right? This one is very useful for the debugging and the like logging. And because we need to save a log file, right? In the according to the specification, we need to do the logging for our Python for our assignment. So you can use this one. You can just choose the file name and then run it like this. Then you can go to the folder and open this file. You can see all the messages are in the log file. So how can we use this? Let's just have a quick look of this. Uh, maybe we can just change the format, just do everything and just leave the message in here. And if you receive a packet, then you can use login warning or other stuff to record this message, like RCV. Mm, what is the message? Let me just have a quick look. Okay, and the time. And back. And you can go on something like this, then you will be able to see here some message like this. Is that okay? So that's how we use the login. Any question about this part? This one is very useful for the login stuff, as you can see here. It can help us to save the log. And like, because this one is a fixed value. So in your program, it should be like, uh, like message type. The RCV and the time you will do some calculation in here, but I just put it put the value in here. And the like uh, mess uh, acknowledgement, yes. And how should I call this? It's also a type of packet. Okay, type. And the sequence number. For example, you can change it like this. And you use the symbol to isolate it. And put the time here. And something like this. So you can put a variable inside the message and you can run it, then you will have some new stuff in here. And you can, so you, you need to load the variable from the package or from your program. Change to another one. 
and run it and you will have a new line so you don't need to write your like write the open file command to write to write this kind of log you can just simply use the login function and also you can use the debug function on the login to do the debug just to replace the print function and that's it that's the login function Next one, the multi multi threading. Uh, we also go through some multi threading basics, like what, what does this mean in the Python, and how can we start it, and what is the join function from last week. So if you want to have a look, you can just go to have a check of the, of the recording. Okay, we have a question here. For the final submission, we should only have warning logs in, in the log file, no debug. Uh, yes, this one really depends on, on how you implement it. For example, this one, uh, I use warning to save the log message. So I will just use the level of warning if I do the submission. Because for the debug, debug is the lowest level message. So if you put the level higher than the debug, then it will not include any message in the output. For example, I have a high here, but in the log file, we don't have the message about high, right? And in here, if I change this one to debug and run it again, then you can see we have the high in here in the log file that's not we want and when you do the debug you can also use the this line use the string then you will be able to see the output in the console so it's easier so this one is very useful for our assignment save you a lot of time okay so that's the stuff and now we come to the template so last week we have implemented a template like this let me try to run it so you can see what do we have in here So left hand side is the receiver and right hand side is the uh, is the sender. They will be able to like send a file like this. I also implement a drop packet function in the receiver, but the sender does not have the function to resend the packet. And there is no sequence number in this part. I didn't implement it. If you want to have a look of the code, uh, then you can go to the GitHub link in here. Let me share the link to you. In the chat, you can go to this GitHub link and have a, have a check of this code. And if today we have any new code, I will also upload it. So this is the stuff from last week. You'll be able to see like what is the, uh, how can we send the file in different packets. But in here, we don't have any kind of header in here. So we need to implement it because last week, I don't want to make it too complicated. So we have no header and no sequence number in here. And this week, let's try to do the sequence number at first. Uh, in the 
receiver side, firstly, I want to print every message we have received. So in here, if we have received any message, then we uh, use the login function, login dot debug. And we will print this message. Uh, a new message. We run it. You can say we get a new message like this. There is no there is no headers and no sequence number in here. Now we are trying to add a new sequence number, maybe at the beginning of it, according to our specification. So here uh, you can go to the page six or five and here so the segment format we need to attach this kind of this kind of header in here so including the type sequence number and data so here we just make it simple. We just do the sequence number. And let's have a look. How can we do it to put a sequence number at first? So you need to go to the sender and have a check. Where did you send the message? Like, for example, you send a message uh, in here. I send a message in here. I just read the content and send it in here. So before we send it, we need to modify the content. So maybe we can add a sequence number. Sequence number, we can have, have a random number. So in here, I just specify as 10,000. And how can we attach with it? The first idea is to just treat it as a like string. But this one is not good, but let's try this one first. The so sequence number. The dot two bytes, length two, and big plus content. So let's try this way. I'm not sure it, it will work, but let's try. Okay. So we, we can send it, but the receiver is not able to read it, right? That's the reason like we may have problem in here. Uh, let me try to modify in the receiver side because the message in the receiver cannot be decoded. So in here, when we get a message, if we try to print it out, the message send this, Okay, it's larger. Okay, so it's not about the decode. It's about the buffer size. And let's try to move the buffer size to a larger one. And run it again. Okay, now we can see the new message. It's like, it, like this. We have a digit at the beginning of it. And let's try to print it out. Try to decode it. Maybe in here. Get a new message. And we also want to put a sequence number in here. Login dot debug sequence number equal to sequence number. And we need to read it at first. So sequence number will equal to the first two bytes. So it's incoming message from zero to two. 
Um, and this one is bytes. Yes. So you need to know how to decode it. So if you decode like this, and it may have an error. Let's have a look. Okay, so this one does not work. So you need to try to figure this out. Do you have any idea? So in here, we cannot see the sequence number as we use the wrong encoding. So you, you can also have a check of the source code of two bytes. And this one will give you some idea how to transform a byte to the integer. Does, one, does, does anyone have this kind of question? Or have you already solved it? What other data type can you encode? I tried dictionary, but it did not work. Uh, usually, it is not recommended to use dictionary in the message as we have already specified the message type. I just copy some code from my template to here. Mm. I just put this one integer from bytes to read the sequence number. Byte order is big. And that's how we load it. And let's try to rerun it. And it's a string object. Hmm. Strange. The same one. Uh, yeah, that's because I decoded in the previous line. Okay, so you can see here, we can load the sequence number from the header. Could we just encode and decode? Uh, I think not. For example, you just put it at the beginning of the message. 
uh, maybe in here. Let, let's just delete all the stuff in here and do it again. For example, you want to just encode and decode it. Let's try this one. So we have the sequence number, you could do this one. And maybe you, you just want to like treat it as a message. Like let's try this one content. I just have a long message, long text message. Okay, so this is our payload and we just attach this one with our content. So you can, you can see, uh, maybe just put it here, sequence number in here. And for example, we have other stuff like uh, packet type, which is data in here. No, we just put it zero one because we use this one to represent like data or not. Okay, type and you can put it like this sequence number and and the data type packet type. And if you send it like this and uh, it's okay to send it while this one uh, and you need to encode it and in this part you just decode it let's try to do this one you can see we get a new message we you can see uh we do receive the sequence number and the uh, packet type in here but what if the sequence number is very long like this and in here you can see we can still see it but you how can your program like specify which one is the sequence number and which one is the uh, packet type it's very hard because the length is like it's variable so how can you extract this on your message of course you can use a dictionary but in the specification we have already asked you to do it like in this way so if you don't do it in this way for example you can send a dictionary it will work but you will lose marks and that's just a quick look of how to send a dictionary in here for example so you have a header Header equal to this one, and you put it as a dictionary, which is good. This is a wise idea, but we already specified we need to use that the header in the assignment. So I don't recommend you to do it, but you can still do it. For example, we have a header like this, and, and we put a header at the beginning then you will have an error because we are not able to put this kind of stuff, this kind of like a dictionary object into a string or into a byte. You run it like this. Uh, we can still do it, <laughs> it's not bad. But you will have some problem when you, like when you read it, right? So it would be a problem. How can you specify the, the dictionary from a message? Or you can do it like this. If you want to do it, like, you can also put a message inside. So you put the content in here. And maybe just cover this one. Content. And now we can try to send the header. And now we just call it content. And try to send this one. And it will some, have some error in here. Because the data type is not allowed. So you can, maybe you can use uh, like you can use JSON 
and json dot dump dump this content try to send this one try to send it uh, string so we need to encode it okay we can still get a message which is good can do it like this way it's like much easier but it's not recommended and in the receiver side it's also very easy you just load it and print it out how would you send the message when you had a rich data type would you use to easily distinguish each part so does it have to be in string yeah it, it's meant to be a byte it's not a string so you have to send the byte as you can see here the message this in this one uh, this one is also a byte it's not a string uh actually it's not so in here i send a pure string from the sender to receiver uh in this part is good but it is not working for our assignment so do not copy this kind of code in here i just want to show you this one is not working but it's very easy to do it uh, for example in here you can just use the json library to load it very easy but this one is not we want you can just start, delete this this stuff what we want is to you to have something like that like sequence for example we have a sequence number for this one and the packet five equal to one and we want you to do like this a uh, sequence number and packet type and the payload load message we want you to send payload payload is also a byte in here so because we read it from the file and we just can also put a sequence number in here as well i think sequence number and packet type this <clears throat> And we need to make it as a string so we need to two bytes and the length is two and if we use this one like this so they are they are bytes right now and the content is like this we can just simply send it and maybe not use this one you just add it together oh, too big to count and you have some error here uh it cannot be this one like this i remember we do limit the range of the sequence number here and this one cannot be decoded so in here you need to decode it in the receiver side so let's just ignore this part at first we don't save it we just print it now you can see 
no matter how long is the sequence number. In here, the sequence number is like in five digits, it will have the message like this, one, two, three, four, only four bytes. And if even you have the sequence number equal to one, and the length will be the same, and we send it again. In here, it will be the same, right? So it doesn't really matter like what is the length of the sequence number anymore. And this one is no string. It, it is bytes for the integer. So if you use the function decode, you will not work, right? We cannot like extract the number by using that function. You need to use the function as I showed you before. Uh, where's the function? Like this, we just slide it, slice it at first. Then we print it. We use this function from, from bytes and then run it. Let me just rerun it. Like this, sequence number equal to one right now. Yeah, you can try to do it like uh, as the string at first, but you will figure out why shouldn't we do like that? Because when once you have a random sequence number, the length could be different, right? For example, 10,000. The string will be very hard to distinguish it. And we are asking you to do it like in this way, in this way. And only six bytes allowed. And so if you do it like in other way, while string or while JSON, it will not like work. Like you, you may lose some marks, I reckon. Is that okay? So this part, this part, I think that's it. I have already like show you how to add a sequence number. Try use that function struct pack add a type. Uh, what is the age in your question? Or oh, hex. Yeah, this may work. Just make sure it is six bytes, two bytes for each, and that's what all we want. And next part, we can come to here, a list of features to be implemented. So when you do the assignment, I recommend you to do them one by one. So if you finish them all, then the assignment is completed. So shall we start from the first one, or do you have any question regarding the, any any one of them? Because most of us are, have already done, done like some kind of job, so I'm not sure should we start from the beginning. Okay. Okay. Start from the first. We just need to see send the thing and act. 
three way handshake. Mm. So what is the question in here? This one seems pretty easy. So from, from the thing and from send an app, so just like a message, right? So maybe before we do it, we need to search in here. Then, then we can know like what is the requirement for this one. For example, in here we can see the thing. We just change the type to two and sequence number as well, right? Seems just send a normal message from the sender to receiver. For example, now we want to send a thing and we just specify a sequence number here. And we just uh, specify the file type to two is a thing. And we don't have any payload, right? Because it's just a thing packet and we can just send this one to the receiver side and the receiver side which maybe we just need to have a if command like we can have a if command after we load the sequence number and packet type packet type will be this one hmm from the second one to four you know. let me just change to this one. put it like this so we just load the sequence number and packet type and if we have packet type we go to two which is thing then maybe we can log in the deep bug it is a thing packet Let's see if it's working. Uh, byte order, my bad. Hmm. Okay. It is working right now. So we have an error at the end of it. In here. In here. I just ignore it. Okay. So you can see we can that that's how we identify identify this one is a sync packet. If the thing gets retransmitted multiple times, is it only the very first thing we send that has the reference zero time? Uh, are you talking about the sender side or the receiver side? Uh, sender side? No, I think you need to log it. But I, I think. There are also a requirement in here, like if you, if the same had been dropped, then you need to reset it, right? So this one is a corner case. Let me check this one for you. Because I remember we need to close the sender if we didn't 
care the acknowledgement for the same. Research reset. Maybe I need to check the setting on the receiver side. So in the receiver, we have some parameters. FLP or RLP? Yeah, this is the FLP. So you are talking about the FLP. If, if we set the FLP value, then we may drop any, any incoming message, right? Including the same. So in the center side, we will have a timer when we initialize the connection. And what if we drop a lot of things? Let me check. As you can see here, like how many number of package job will be recorded? And for the log, I think it's in page six and seven. We need to have a timer like this. It doesn't mention in the specification, but I do remember someone asked this question in the forum. So this one should be a corner case. And you can just post it on the forum. So you can have the proof and do the implementation. So in my point of view, if you need to reset, if we didn't get the connection established, then you don't need to have the log and you don't need to like start the timer. So if you fail to send it, you just uh, set the timer to zero again and close it. Otherwise you will put, you will just keep the timer going and then you will have a log for that. Yeah, so I recommend you to just post this question on the forum. So I do remember we, we have some similar question on that, on the forum. You can have a check of it. I remember Celio says, we need to reset it if we cannot establish a free way handshake. Oh, actually, it's in here. If the it's not acknowledged, then we need to reset it after three times. 
So you you don't I don't think you need to reset the timer. You just keep it going, and then you put a log in the center side. So you can see we you have reset like how many packets for the same. Is that okay? For the first configuration, you just need to send uh, like a message like this, acknowledgement, saying, basically all you need to do is do some modification here. You just change the packet type, right? You just change to this one, change to one. You can just else, L if take it type equal to one, then we can say uh it, it is uh what kind of packet? I don't know, maybe data pack. Let's do something like this. So you can say I uh, will say it is a data package or it's the same package. So this one is very easy. You just, uh, once you know how to do the header, then you will be able to like manipulate this. For the reliable channel, the uh, is it a question? Okay, for the reliable channel, the FLP and RP are both zero. Uh, I can check the setting here. So I do, I do remember we put it one here so this one is reliable transmission we set it as one instead of zero uh, you can have a look at the specification so flp search you can see the definition of it So if you set it as one, then it will be 100%. Yes. So this one is not reliable. Not reliable at all. You should set it at, at zero. So you just set it as zero, like 0% 0 of loss probability. And for the configuration, we go back to that. Now have a look, what kind of stuff shall we do? So 
say this is the first one, the second one. So a re reset or close stage is pretty easy. So I, I will not show you. Otherwise, you don't need to do anything. So this one just basically uh, resets or close the socket, right? Just close the program. A reset is just re quite similar to that. And the second one is the sequence number. Uh, I think it's, it is talking about the standard side in the sequence number. So in here, I recommend you to use this one to import. We have already imported random. So you can just simply use it random the uh, random random integer so from let's say one to to which one two of the power of 16 minus one and we need to print out the sequence number in here And here, sequence number, we just print it out. So you can see the sequence number is a random one. Uh, is the max window for packets the contents equal to read value of the value variable? Uh, kind of, it's, but it's not correct. For example, if the, the max window is 1000, we should deduct by six, right? Because we have a header. But uh, but in the in here in the page seven to eight, it's usually one thousand. So maybe it's okay. One thousand should be five. And this is also a question in the forum. Just check the specification. Uh, this one does not include STP headers. So you're right. Uh, I'm sorry, you're right. You just put the value in here. Just put 1000 if the max window size is 1000. Don't worry about the header. So just one thing in here, the buffer size. If you set it as 1000, and if you have a lower buffer size, let's say, uh, like 900 in buffer size, you may not receive the complete message. Uh, but in here it's good because we have very short message, right? The, what if we have very long message? You will not get the complete package for this one. So you need to consider about the buffer size in here. And always make sure like the buffer size is larger than that. Otherwise, you need to like combine different packets into one and then load it. We need to combine the packets for the assignment. We might need to do that. If the like win window size is very big. Uh, a tricky way is to set the buffer size to the largest value. 
right? You can set a very huge buffer size. But what if we test like with a very huge max window? And we didn't we didn't mention about the maximum number, right? We didn't mention about the limit or the range of the maximum window. So what if we test a very large max window? Then you need to combine the packets to make it robust. Otherwise you may have some question. You may have some error, right? So this is also a corner case. Don't worry too much at first, but just make sure you if you have time, try to handle this one. Like if the buffer size is lower than the max window, then you need to merge the sequence and you need to merge the packet into one and then load it. Or you can just post the question on the forum to ask our lecturer, like, is there a limitation for the max window? Is there any other questions? If no, then we go to next one. One directional connection termination. Yeah, this one is quite similar to the first one. So you need to have a timer in the center. And you just do it uh, uh, after three times. So you need to set a timer here before you send it. Like before you send it, you need to record the time of it. Like the you can use the time stamps to make it easier. Or you can use the time dot time. Uh, login dot debug timestamp. Time dot C time. This one will Print the timestamps of this packet. Oh, this this one is the string of it. Maybe daytime the daytime the timestamp. Like this, you have a record of the like timestamp of the packet, so you will be able to calculate when did you get the acknowledgement, and you can also judge like how many 
seconds has passed. So this should be a very easy kind of task from the calculation based on the time. Can use the timestamps to make it like make the calculation easier. The next one, the fourth one, the sliding window protocol. So you you, can, you will be able to send like several packets at the same time. And you should always maintain a buffer in the receiver side. So this one is like a selective repeat. So the receiver side will cage everything in the buffer until you get the whole stuff and then you combine it and save it into a file. And that's it. Like, let me know if you have any like question regarding to this kind of task so I can show you or we can have a discussion about it. Uh, we are implementing a st store and wait protocol. Hence, if we send packet zero, we don't send packet one. Yes, I do remember this one is mentioned. Store and wait. one segment at a time. Yeah, so we, and here we need to wait, just send one segment at a time, as you can see here. But like we talk about like the buffer size and the max window, right? For the max window, we may need to combine the packets. The packet is not a segment, right? One segment have only one header, but one packet may not have any header. So in the segment, you need to have a header. But the packet like could be a part of the segment. So it should be something like this. Let me draw it. For example, this one is a packet. A segment. Segment. Segment one. It could be a packet. Packet one header plus payload and packet two payload and packet three payload. So in the like receiver side, you may need to 
merge them into one segment and load it. So this is the like, first configuration. And then you come to the second configuration. But in the second configuration, I didn't see any kind of stop and wait, right? Do we need to also maintain a stop and wait waiting here? Like in the second configuration, it is saying that send packets in a pipeline manner. I reckon we can send send like lots of segments at the same time but in the first configuration it is like stop and wait protocol so let me do more research because we do mention about this stuff Yeah, so we are talking about this one. If you go through the uh, specification recording from our lecturer, this one is the first configuration in page 12. In page 12, you can see how to get started, right? So we call this part is the first configuration and this part is the second configuration. Yes. I think. So in, I remember we need to do a pipeline at the end of it, but let me have a double check because this 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 one is not the first version, so it may change. The stop and wait. Okay, so when the max window is set to 1000, 
it is a stop and wait protocol. But if it's uh, like 5,000, then you can send a couple of segments at the same time. Is that okay? So it will be like this. You will have a file in here. You have a file, let's say this one is the file and it have lots of message, lots of content in here. So you divide the file into three different parts. And then you can put it as this one, seg segment one, header plus the payload and segment two. And so like this. So at the end of it, you should be able to send like a lot, like two segments at the same time or three segments at the same time. If we have enough, like, we have enough the maximum window value. Uh, the max window will be larger than 1000. So do not consider the value under 1000. Where can we show our code if we don't understand the overall structure not to debug? Um, you can show your like output of the code. You can, you can sh share your screen if you want, and you can show the output of it. Like, and then we can have a look, or you can just ask any general question. Uh, there is not any one to one. Yes, so I we need to do the pipelining at the end of it. But at the beginning, you just consider this one is one by one. Stop and wait.
Yes. So if you have any question regarding to the general information, or you want to have some like clarify, clarify, then you need to go to the seller's consultation. But like if you have some programming question, you can just ask in here, and we can have a look. And seller will not answer the programming question in here. Uh, in case consultation time. And I'm not able to look at your code and teach you how to do the programming stuff. But otherwise it will not fail, right? And we need to like have the recording for the uh, tutorial. But as I mentioned before, you can just show the output of it and we can have a discussion of it. So everyone can learn from it. Let me come back to here. So basically it's everything. The sender. And we have already go through the login stuff, right? At the beginning, we have learned how to write this kind of log at, for the Nice task. And we also mentioned this part, how to construct a sequence number and we all already know how to send it and read it. But we didn't talk about too much about the timeout because I do want you to do it by yourself. And uh, here I just mentioned how to use the how to use this one. How to set a timer in here. So we didn't do the calculation of it. You can try to do it by yourself and let me know if you have any question. And as well as the sequence number calculation we don't have the calculation in here so if you reply the same then you need to add the sequence number by one and if you reply the data packets then you need to add the size add the length of the payload to the sequence number And that, that's the task that you need to do. I think we have already done like half of the program. Basically, everything. All you need to do is the timer and the sequence number calculation. We don't drop the reset packet, right? So at LP, you can search in here. In here, we didn't mention about the like reset packet. FLP and ILP, 
so we don't need to drop it. When will the video be posted for the help session? Uh, maybe tomorrow. We need to process the recording and upload to YouTube, the YouTube link. You'll be able to see it by tomorrow. For test one, where you test different audio values, what's a good range that we should test like me and Max? Test one. Are you talking about this one? For test one, we just test zero. Test zero. So you don't need to have any 
like packing job in the test one. But in test two, you need to do it like FLP value. You can try it like from 0, 0 0.1 to 0 0.9. Ah, oh, RTO. Okay, sorry. Uh, uh, you are talking about the time. So the time we we will not set to a very low value. And you can also have a check of the post in the forum. We we have mentioned about this question. Like will we test a very low value? No. We will test like 500. We will have long enough for you to get the packet to, to the receiver side. Okay, and I think that's all the stuff for today. So if you have any questions, just ask me. And I will stop sharing right now. And 
I'm going to enable this screen share. So if you have want to share anything with me, you can just share. Uh, yes, it is recording. As I mentioned before, you you can show the output. Do not show the code. But, but the demo code is okay. <laughs> 